So in this week's video, I want to talk about the three things that make you powerfully attractive as a man. And this is really deep stuff. This is stuff that I just did a class on for a group of VIP clients that inspired this video. And this class uh, ended with me uh, committing to put on a two-day live event for revealing only. It's just revealing uh, what we're starting to call the courage process. Where we're going to do deep hypnotic trances with reveals in nine areas that make you super attractive as a man. From feeling like a sexy bastard to eye contact to touch the voice to your heart, your vulnerability to your turn on to feeling more turn on. And we're going to be using these trances to really bring these qualities out so that your sub communication naturally changes. You become powerful. Well, there were three principles that we went through that inspired this new training that's coming out. And I want to cover these three principles for you. And then if you're interested in this training, this is the last training around dating that I'm planning to do maybe ever. So um, then if you're interested in this training at the end, there'll be an offer where we can talk about that and you, you can definitely uh, check that out. But in the meantime, let's get into these topics because I think they're so powerful. Number one, let's dive right in. It's masculinity. It's really about masculinity. You don't have to be masculine all the time. Matter of fact, I don't want you to be fully masculine. I've got a lot of feminine guys. I flow. I'm feminine in my business a lot. I'm the artist. But when it comes to dating and relationships, I know how to polarize with masculinity. I know how to step into masculinity with my personal power as a man. Now, I had to develop that. I used to be super insecure. I used to be super, you super needy. Matter of fact, I'm going to have the editor put a, a clip up here showing an old version of me with my 20s, my 30s. That's going to be on the left over here. And in the middle, there'll be a new version of me. And then on the right, you're going to see me where I was out in my heyday playing and having fun with women after I learned these principles and how powerful they are. So when you look at that, notice the difference in me. When you change who you're being at a core level, your sub communication changes. The emotional states you transmit into another human being, a woman, a beautiful woman in this case, is huge. You see, you're constantly transferring uh, emotions to other people. And when you're masculine, it transfers a certain set of sub communication. When you're not, it doesn't. You see, the average man today, the average man that watches this channel, what the reason I started this channel, who I used to be, we have the nice guy syndrome. We have a bad case of the nice guy syndrome. So we love to be nice. We love to take care of everybody, but that comes at a cost. You see, being overly nice all the time usually indicates to women that you don't have the balls to stand up for them. You don't have the balls to go after your dreams. You don't, you're not good with tension, which is what they most need in a man. They need to know you have access to your animal, but you also have control over your animal. That you can step into tension and deal with shit when shit hits the fan, but you can also be sweet and nice and vulnerable when you need to be by choice. The nice guy doesn't have choice. He's constantly nice to get validation, to feel safe. So because he doesn't want to be hurt, he doesn't know how to step into his balls and say no. The bad boy knows how to step into his balls. He knows how to say no. And that's why he gets so much more women. He, that she's more in touch with his animal. When he says, I want to bend you over, he means it. A nice guy will most likely say something like, oh, you're so pretty in that dress. I would never do something like that. Or I would love to take you out on a date when really inside he's thinking, I want to bend you over. You are so beautiful. Let's, you know, you're so damn sexy. And he just won't go there. He won't say it. Now, the one, what makes the masculine man so powerful? What makes the masculine man masculine? What did we, how did we lose this actually? See, we're, you're designed to be attractive. You're designed by nature to attract women. You're mask, you're male, excuse me. And men are designed to attract women. And the masculine is the prime energy of the men that actually draws women in. So how did we lose that? Well, in modern society, we started valuing comfort and security over everything else. We started valuing being safe, not taking risks. And that's what started to create the nice guy. You, you know, get a good job. Don't take risks. Don't push boundaries. Our ancestors weren't like that. They went out and hunt, hunted. They went out and killed. They went out and protected. They used masculinity to provide tons of value to this world. I mean, these cities wouldn't be here without them. This culture wouldn't be here without them. Think about rites of passages for young boys. Young boys used to have to go out into the woods and say, like, let's say, survive for a week with a knife. They had some form of rites of passage where they had to face death and face the fear of death to be fully become a man, to fully provide value. They had a sense of purpose, purpose greater than her and greater than themselves. They loved tension. They love stepping into tension. And that's the real key. It's loving tension. That's how you develop your masculinity. It's the secret lost art. But there's one thing I used to miss when I would teach this. And this is probably the most important piece. And I don't want you to miss this. 
You've got to love tension. You can't force yourself to do tension. You can't want to be good at tension. If you go into tension and you start doing things to develop your tension skills out of force, you're actually going to burn out. You're going to get tired. You're going to get you're going to get really burned out. You see, the real masters of tension, the guys out there that women really love, they are courageous in the face of tension. They love tension and courage is the first energy of love. It, with courage, we feel alive. I'm not talking about this fake pseudo courage where you're pretending to be confident. That's what a lot of guys do. I'm talking about real honest to God courage. Real honest to God courage is not forcing. It's not pushing. It's you move forward by choice. Now imagine going to the gym every day to build a, a new body and you have to go to the gym. You force yourself to go to the gym because you want that body so bad, but you don't really enjoy it. How long before you get burned out, you get tired? Now imagine the guy that goes to the gym every day because he loves it and he feels the pain of a good workout and he says, it feels so good to hurt that way because that soreness means my muscles are growing. Feel the difference in the way they think. Imagine the guy that approaches a beautiful woman because he has to, because he wants to get good at women. He wants to get her validation. He's not growing his courage. He's actually building up pain. He's associating pain with approaching. Now imagine the guy that steps into courage. And courage is synonymous with words like alive, uh, zest, zeal, uh, awake, um, alert. Uh, it's this lighter energy. And it's like, yeah, let's do it. And he walks up to women every day and says, oh, you scare me, but I can't wait to do it. He's not really scared. He's excited. He's stepping into courage and he's growing his masculine by choice. And he walks up to that woman. She, maybe she rejects him, but he goes, wow, I learned a lot from that because he's through the courage he's not taking it so personal he's feeling more alive with each approach and so the development of courage is the key element in building your masculinity and this is something that i didn't talk about enough before and didn't fully understand but now oh my god it shifted my life so much and shifted so many clients lives so as you learn to feel more alert adventurous alive awake uh feel this powerful feel the choice feels really confident, not fake confident, where you cover up your heart, where you feel vulnerable with your heart, that's when you're really going to begin to change. You see, Brene Brown put out uh, this thing on courage. She said the root word of courage is core. And it's and what that word meant before they changed the definition. But the old definition of courage was to speak one's mind, uh, I believe, by feeling one's heart or through one's heart or by speaking one's heart. And that's what real courage is about. It's speaking from the heart, feeling the heart, being in your heart. And I would say being in your heart and your turn on at the same time, speaking your truth. Damn, you're sexy. Look at you. You're beautiful. That can be developed. Matter of fact, your relationship to courage can be developed. And I've been working on that with the revealing process and what we're calling now the true courage process for a while. And I'm excited to say that that I'm watching people change like crazy as they're learning to step into their courage more and more and more. It's pretty wild to watch. And this is causing their masculinity to grow at a faster rate than ever. Not just their masculinity, let's throw that out the window. Their sense of purpose, their passion to get up in their morning, their desire to slay the day and to go after their dreams. That's what it's really about. It actually shifts the hormone balance in your body. So number one is developing courage around uh, stepping into tension, which then grows your masculinity and your sense of purpose around beautiful women. If you can master that, then you're well on your way to making all those dating techniques you've ever learned work, like cocky, funny, banter, um, you know, deep rapport, uh, you know, whatever it is you learn. That stuff doesn't work because you're not in proper alignment with what you're feeling. Number two, do you really enjoy women? This is, this is huge, guys. The second thing that I run into with a lot of men is they don't really enjoy women. They're only trying to get women to prove they're good enough. Do you enjoy women when they're grumpy? Do you enjoy women when they're upset? Do you enjoy women when they are uh, when they reject you? Can you still laugh and say, damn, she was cute? Or do you take it personal? You don't know this woman from Adam. She rejected you, so what? Matter of fact, a lot of women that reject men and the men don't get upset and kind of just laugh at it, they suddenly get attracted. It happens all the time. It changes their opinion of the man. It's like, wow, he's solid as a rock. There's something about him. I'm getting interested. Or maybe she doesn't get interested, but the woman that just saw her reject you and then she's like, damn, look at that guy. She gets interested. Men that really enjoy women, they enjoy women for being women. They don't get mad at the one woman that rejected them. And then so many more don't reject them because of that. And the one that rejected them ends up regretting it because she's like, damn, I screwed up. And that's true. So when you look at a woman 
and you see her walk out and she's wearing a sexy dress, do you look at her and go, damn, you know, that dress looks really nice on you. I, I think it's, it's beautiful. And, or analytically, like a nice guy would. Or do you look at her and say, damn, that dress looks good on you. Whew, makes your ass look amazing, baby. And you really speak your truth or do you edit your words? Or, you know what? I really want you to wear that little tight red dress. It's so sexy on you. It's beautiful. Will you do that for me? And uh, you know what? I know this place I want to take you tomorrow night. It's it's awesome. But I want you to get dressed up for me. Look really sexy for me. I, I, want, I want to hold you on my arm. I want every guy staring at you. You know, when you speak like that, it's so powerful. And it's so much more fun for both of you. And it's unedited. Nice guys love to edit their words. And men that really enjoy women don't edit their words. So... And in, in problem number two, and the, the second thing here on uh, today's thing, I want you to practice enjoying women. Go out and say, if I didn't edit my words, what would I say to that woman? What do I like about her? Do I like her? Be really selfish here. Selfishly ask yourself, do I like this woman in front of me? Do I like that one? What do I like about her? What, what could I look at that'll make me even like her more? How would I like her more? What is it about the way she tosses her hair? She looks at me with her eyes, her little laugh that's so cute, the eye colors, you know, because sometimes we usually have more than one color in our eyes, actually. A lot of people don't know that. And you notice these subtle details. It's so powerful to women. So number one, do you enjoy your own masculinity through the development? And if you don't, the development of courage is how you do it. It teaches you to have passion for the day and passion for life gives you a sense of purpose. Number two, do you enjoy women? Do you enjoy their femininity? Do you, do you have, do you get pleasure out of it? Do you look at them and think they're beautiful just for the sake of them being female? And then when you meet that woman you really like, do you stop editing your words and tell her the truth? Do you say what you're really feeling? You know, do you, do you, do you really let loose in this area or do you hold back and edit everything you're saying? And uh, if you get those two things down, then that brings us to number three. Number three is polarity. When you really know how to step into your courage and into your masculinity, into your sense of purpose and talk to a woman from there, it can really activate and polarize her femininity. You see, masculinity is grounding, it's structure, it's flow, it's penetrating, it's leading, it's directing. Femininity is expression. Uh, masculinity is not flow, it's a channel, excuse me. Femininity is flow, it's expression, it's openness, it's receiving. It's, it's a whole different type of energy. So when you really know how to step into your masculinity and you look at a beautiful woman, and you take her out on a date, let's say, and you step into the role for the date. This is a first date for the masculine. And you say, I'm going to take the lead. I'm going to take you to this restaurant. It's, it's beautiful. I'm going to take you to this, this, this little lounge that's right by the water. It's got this beautiful view. And you set that up and you create a beautiful container. And you say, I got this. But here's what I want you to do. Just dress sexy for me. Dress really nice. Be, you know, uh, and, uh, and give her a space to flow and be feminine then that can be an amazing experience for her because as she gets more and more into a feminine, she's going to want to fill that space. You crowd, you created this beautiful space. Maybe you've got this beautiful place you like to go or you know all the, the waiters and they're good friends of yours and they, they help take care of you. Then she fills it up. She flows, she dances, she expresses for you and she's doing that for you. The more she tosses her hair and gives you those coy looks, the more she's doing it for you because you're doing a good job of creating a space for her to fill up with femininity. And that container is huge. Now, does that mean you have to do it all? No, not at all. Not at all. Maybe you cook her, cook a dinner at your house and you bring her over, you give her jobs to do. I want you to do this and this and do a good job. I'm going to be watching you as you set the frame and then you give her little jobs to do within it. And that can be sexy and fun for her too. Maybe on the third date, you say, you know, what? I've taken you out on three awesome dates. It's, it's your turn to take me out on a date. Make it, make it good. I want to see what you can do. You're still leading. You're setting the frame of what's happening but you're giving her a job to do. And that's fun for her too. What happens though, is she becomes more into her feminine in response to you setting these really good containers from your masculine, you actually start to create polarity. And she wants to fill the frame with her feminine energy, her flow. And that's, and then she suddenly will start back, back leading in the sense of seducing you. She might doing it with, she might be doing it with a little eye contact, a little toss of the hair, the way she wiggles and moves in front of you, the way she makes sure that she bends over just at the right time. So you see her ass and then she acts all coy. She's doing that stuff for you. Realize that, that if you set the frame properly, now she will do her part in the seduction and she is seducing you 
from the feminine role. And that's what you want to create. You want to create a space where she can do that. And a lot of guys miss this. It's huge. You don't have to do everything. And matter of fact, it's best often, especially after the first date, maybe on the first date, you do a little bit more, but you don't do everything. Uh, you give her space to participate, to do her part, to, to do what she needs to do, but you keep a container and you keep the space safe for this flow and seduction for her to fill it up with your feminine. And if you've nailed these first three things and you've gotten really good at them, you really got the masculine through courage down, you got enjoying the feminine, you created a really good container. Then this fourth thing, this bonus thing is going to be easy and it's going to be awesome. And this is all done. I want to remind you guys, this is all done through subcommunication. This is all done through the art of, of, uh, of delivering micro expression, subcommunication, vocal tone, turn on. It's I mean, are you in your heart? Are you in your vulnerability? Are you in your turn on? Does your voice have juice in it and a life to it? Are you listening and receiving her into your body? When you touch her, do you ground her? Do you channel turn on into her? These things are really important. If you know a lot of dating techniques, but you don't have this stuff down, that's huge. And that all starts with how you feel in all these parts of your body. I want to remind you of that. Now, as we understand that and we go into the fourth thing that's really important for you to understand, I want you to keep this in mind that, that what I just talked about. Now, the fourth thing is you've got to, um, you've got to, this is all about sex. If you want to have the best sex life possible, and this changed my life radically when I got this down, it was taught to me by actually a swinger that slept with more women than I, I can count. But he said, number one, you got to set her free. And number two, you got to protect women's fantasies. What does that mean? Well, setting her free means not judging a woman for her sexual fantasies. And number two, protecting your fantasies, not telling them to other people. And when I started practicing this, this radically shifted my sex life. When I started to date women and I started to ask them what they really want sexually, at first they would hold back. But as they realized, I didn't judge them. Matter of fact, I started to share the things I liked and was really open about it. They started to get more open with me. I'll give you an example. One woman I was with wanted to, she'd never been with another woman and she wanted to sleep with another woman. I was surprised she even brought it up. You know, I kept saying, you know, what do you like? And we were open and I heard that and I said, well, I can make that happen. So I took her to this swing party that my friend was at. My, that friend that I told you about that taught me this. And when I brought her in, I set up a scenario where she could meet other women that were there that wanted to have fun with women. I had already talked to him about this. Well, she ended up sleeping with four women at once that night. All the guys were watching and we just watched and enjoyed. After it was all over, she immediately grabbed a woman and wanted to have a threesome with me. In a weird sort of way, she, I made her feel so comfortable and so safe and so non-judged for what she wanted to do that she wanted to get back. She knew I wanted a threesome, so she wanted to make one happen for me right away. And it was fucking awesome. And it was beautiful. And, uh, and I was surprised. And from that point on, I never judged a woman for her fantasies again. It didn't mean I had to do it. It just meant I didn't judge it. In my life, I run into two women that told me they wanted to sleep with five men at once. And in both cases, I said, wow, that's crazy. That's awesome that you could share that with me. And you know what? I didn't do it and didn't do it with either of them. But what happened was they felt safe in sharing all their fantasies with me, being sexual with me, telling me anything. They would both tell me. I feel like I can just tell you anything. You're, it's so easy to talk to and I feel safe. And this meant all their sexual fantasies because they also knew I would protect them. I wouldn't tell their sexual fantasies to other people. And this made them feel comfortable. Now, the caveat to this is you can't feel insecure inside when they tell you this stuff. You can't feel weird. You can't feel uncomfortable. You got to be really solid. When the woman tells you she wants to sleep with five guys at once, you just look at her and go, thank you for telling me that was awesome. And then that relaxes her so much. And it's like so many guys will judge her for that. And this works on so many levels. I had one day uh, when I just learned this with a beautiful Brazilian woman and we were sitting in a bar having a drink. We'd been there maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. There wasn't much going on. And I just could feel the sexual tension between us. So I just leaned in and said, I want you to go home with me. And she looked at me stared at me for a few seconds in silence and said back, well, what'd you think of me if I did? And I knew right there, that was it. And I said, I don't play that calmly without a reaction, without a nervous tick. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I tell all my clients, never judge a woman for love and sex. You love sex. Don't judge women for love and sex. Cause that ruins it, ruins it for everybody. That's bullshit. And she went, she smiled and went, okay. 
and I grabbed her hand, we walked right out the door. And that's when I began to realize the more I set women free, the more, in a sense, sexual fantasies I get fulfilled, the more sexual fantasies women want to fulfill for me. And it didn't mean I had to do them all. It just meant that I had to make them feel like they could tell me anything and that I would never tell other people and to literally mean it. And so I'm going to be honest, that wasn't easy at first. I had a lot of insecurities and a lot of jealousy. I had to do a lot of releasing and revealing to clean that up. I had to clean up my subconscious mind and all the stories I had about how I felt sexually inside. But when I did, it really, really set me free. And now the revealing process is becoming the courage process for this very reason. Because as you develop courage, all this stuff starts to become a part of you. You become a powerful human being. And this talk was inspired by a talk I gave to a group of VIP people a little while ago. It was about a three-hour talk. And it spurred on a class that I am I created for them. It was a, it's a class around revealing and dating. I've never done one like this ever in my life. And I want to invite you to potentially be a part of it. If you're interested in learning more about the things I just talked about and how to shift your emotional embodiment to be really powerful with your subcommunication, then this could be something you're interested in. For example, if you want to learn to be truly vulnerable in a masculine way with women so you can feel into them so deep, you almost know what they're feeling before they do, then this could be something that you could be interested in. Or maybe you want to really get really good at your turn on. Or maybe you want to put the two together. Or maybe you want to feel the whole, we're going to do a deeper version uh, the whole body scan meditation, feeling the whole body. See, what I'm planning to do here is we're going to do nine modules at least. I got nine modules planned out that are going to help you do deep level embodiment through releasing, revealing, and the courage process, what I'm really calling the courage process now in these nine areas from uh, the full body scan to going deep into understanding the heart, to going deep into understanding your turn on, to going deep into your uh, grounding, to going deep into your power of eye contact, to touch, sensual touch and grounding with your touch and so much more. We're going to do embodiment in all these different areas of your body, all the way down to feeling like a super sexy bastard inside, feeling like women want to be with you and want to chase you. And for each module, we're going to do a talk about what these energies are like over a two-day period, uh, a demonstration so you can see and play and dance with these energies a little bit, and then a courage process or a revealing process, guided release on this area. So you're going to get a guided release for each area, helping you deepen your embodiment in each area at the subcommunication level. Now, this can be huge. This can be radically shifting for a lot of people. This could be my greatest dating product ever. And this is what I want to finish, I believe, my dating career on before I move into the new business. So if this is something you're interested in, you want to learn more about, then click the link in this video and get started right away. There's going to be an application and get on the phone with Josh or it might be myself or Brad and learn more about this process and what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing this for this other group of clients that were uh, part of this other dating coaches program. I was asked to do it and I figured why not invite you guys to be part of it too? Why not get you guys involved? Imagine having all of these releases, at least not, uh, about nine releases to listen to for the rest of your life, to deepen your attraction as a man, your attractiveness as a man, your turn on as a man, your joy as a man, your power as a man. Imagine having this a deeper level understanding going to the core of the problem. That's what it's really about. And that's what this course is going to be about. That's what this course is going to teach. And I can't wait to share it with you. And I can't wait to put this out. This is going to be something that's going to be amazing for me because it's really going to combine my two loves. Consciousness re uh, revealing re and the courage process and dating. Bringing them together to make you the most attractive man uh, that you can be. So click on the link in the video, uh, fill out the application, and uh, I'll see you in the live course. It's going to be an online live course, and I'll see you there. So with that said, remember... In this case, I'm going to change it a little bit. Only the courageous really live. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.